Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today we have uh, Tom Wolf, who is a uh, radio announcer at uh, Nevada City at uh, KVMR. The program is Word in Edgewise. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we have uh, Cheryl Blychester, who is uh, a, a consulting engineer. Welcome to the show. Also a, a, a conservative libertarian. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or a libertarian conservative. Either. Yes. Yeah, well, libertarian leaning conservative. conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Which okay. one's the adjective? Which go. one's the noun? Libertarian, uh, big L libertarian candidates have uh, started to receive endorsements from some of those conservative Democrats and conservative Republicans, or maybe liberal Republicans. I'm not sure which, but this is this is actually happening in in in, Mass in Massachusetts, or excuse me, in in um, uh, in Rhode Island. William mm -hmm. Hunt is running for the Rhode Island uh, State Assembly, House of Representatives in, in Rhode Island. Right. And he's running for a seat which is being vacated by the incumbent. He ran in a two-person race against the incumbent uh, last election, two, thousand, mm -hmm. uh, two years or four years ago. I'm really not sure just which. a libertarian and a Republican? Yeah, yeah there was, uh, no, a Democrat. Oh, libertarian and yeah. no Republican. No Republican. Wow. So he ran against just just uh, you know just two person race. Mm -hmm. He got thirty eight percent or something yeah. out of the vote. So he, you know respectable. Did respectable. Absolutely. Uh, and obviously he ran a respectable and a civil campaign because the person who is retiring has endorsed him wow. for the office. Oh, wow. The Democrat. The Democrat. Yeah, that's something. Along with and this is uh, in a couple of towns in in uh, in Rhode Island. Along with uh, another Democrat who is the uh, the. The chief of the town, whatever. No, I'm sorry, uh, a, a, a retired assemblyman from mm -hmm. from a, a next door district mm -hmm. uh, in in Rhode Island is has also a Democrat. Yeah. has endorsed him as so, well as as well as two of the uh, two uh, uh, town chairmen for the Republican uh, Central Committee, one in each of the major towns in in the district as well. And one of them was actually the Rhode Island uh, state Republican chairman. Wow. Uh, in, in the past. So four big name uh, Republicans and Democrats have uh, an, uh, endorsed this guy because, primarily because he's running against a, a, an extremely progressive left Democrat, a Democrat. Mm -hmm. That's who got nominated. Yeah. No Republican in the race and uh, really How interesting. How is there no Republican in the race? That's, that's We're talking about Rhode Island here. Yeah, yeah it, it happens okay. in California. It's sort of like California. Where there's no, there's, sort of, there's, there are yeah, some districts where there are no, 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 no Republicans. In fact, one of our, Brandon Nelson is running for state assembly, yeah, state assembly, mm -hmm. in a race uh, over by Dixon and Davis. Uh, and the reason he's running uh, in a two-person race is because there's no Republican. Uh, no no Republican Democrat ran libertarian. in right. the uh, in, in the uh, uh, primary, so he did. Wow. He right. got he got a half a dozen votes, I guess, and you know, right. Uh, half a, a dozen. There That's yeah. all it took. That's all. He's in but the top two. I got to tell you that that um, in in the climate about 10, 15 years ago, there was no chance for any third party right. candidates of any kind. Right. right. It is There's, changing. And, and there was no place. But right now, California nationwide, we have this. Uh, growing middle, this growing decline to state. I don't want to be in the machine of either of the big parties, and so they want to uh, actually evaluate what's going on and make their own decisions. Yeah, I mean, decline to state or independence have got, have gone up. I forget the percentages in the last ten years. Libertarians have gone up ninety-two yeah, percent registration right. in the last in, ten years. Nationwide, you mean? Nationwide, yeah. and uh, and uh, Republicans and Democrats' registration has have both gone down right. in, in single digits. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a phenomenon that's going on. Yeah, and and there's been lots of uh, Republicans that have defined themselves as socially more uh, liberal or more moderate mm. and, and fiscally more conservative. That's right. kind of a standard thing that, that Republicans like to say. Well, that's pretty libertarian. That is yeah. the definition. <laughs> and, and blue dog Democrats are, right. in effect, uh, are the, in same effect the same thing. The they're, same they're, thing. They're, they're, you know, they're more fiscally conservative. So it's not that they're moderate, because I think they're passionate about what they believe well, in. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah that, the mo moderate well, you know, gets a bad uh, rap uh, right. term. Bill, it sounds Bill, like well, <laughs> Bill Wells said the biggest mistake that he and Gary Johnson made in 2016 was they said, we're going to take this road down the center. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He said, well, you know, we're not in the center. No, we're no. radical. Right. We're radically for freedom in all of its manifestations. Right. And it's just we the Venn diagram again, wraps like If we were to do that. it again, <laughs> yeah. we, would not, we would not position ourselves right. as centrists. We position ourselves as radicals for liberty, right. Uh, right. which Republicans also, and Democrats are not. They were just clearly the nice people that were running. Like, <laughs> Too those were the guy, darn the guy, nice. The nice yeah. people. And uh, this, it's not just this uh, Rhode Island race. Uh, also in, in Massachusetts, <clears throat> Dan Fishman is running for auditor. 
uh, an auditor is, a, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the policeman of the, of the state, the guy that right, uh, right. does the audits, makes sure, sure. that nobody that, is uh, engaging in uh, skullduggery in, in the books and so forth, right, right, fraud, exactly, that exactly. sort of thing. And there's a lot of that in Boston, in the Massachusetts, ah. you know, su surprisingly, there's a lot of fraud in Boston politics. Who, 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 who would have thunk? Who would have known? Anyway, Dan <laughs> Fishman has been has been endorsed by the Boston Globe, which is huge. That's, That's a huge. 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 That's huge. Huge. And Jeff Hewitt here in California, uh, he is the mayor of Calamisa, mm -hmm. uh, which is a nonpartisan office, but he's a, he's on the Libertarian National Committee. Doesn't make any secret about the fact mm -hmm. that he is in fact a libertarian. Dan uh, Jeff Hewitt uh, decided to run, and he he uh, accomplished pension reform in Calamisa. Mm -hmm. He was able to get Calamisa out from under the Cal Fire uh, pension uh, mon uh, monstrosity, do, right. it, do it himself, do it independently, solve the pension problem for the little town of Calamisa. Riverside County, in which mm -hmm. he is now running for the County Board of Supervisors, has the exact same problem. A union uh -huh. negotiated pension that is not going anywhere but down and down mm -hmm. fast. And so Jeff Hewitt, for that reason among others, has been uh, has been endorsed well, by the Riverside Press Enterprise, which is the primary newspaper mm -hmm. in that county. And what Maybe are they he can figure out how to scale that up and, and keep scaling right. it up so it hits CalPERS and CalSERS. And they who get knows? their reputation. Of, the the libertarians fix. are the ones you, come, you, you call on to come in and fix the problems, just like come in, you know. Yeah. And even if you're just that, even if you're just the, the, like the, but, the workman, right. eventually people start to recognize, wait, this is the, these are the people that are actually getting the things done that need to happen. And then the third uh, major endorsement is Steve Dutner for the Illinois Secretary of State Office. And he was endorsed by the, uh, the Springfield newspaper. Uh, in their endorsement, they said something really interesting. They said, the incumbent, who is Democrat and has mm -hmm. been there for you know, 10,000 terms, is 78. Mm -hmm. And they, they put it nicely. They said he sounded kind of confused on the oh. questions uh -huh. he was asked. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and didn't seem to have any real new ideas. Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise. The Republican, yeah. all he could do is talk about the, the Democrat and how he should be term limited. Right. But the, the Libertarian, Steve Dutner, came up with a number of good ideas. ideas like actually, what we ideas. should do is we should maybe get rid of front license plates. Maybe we should make it possible to uh, register for, you know, sign up for a new license uh, or a new uh, plate uh, in kiosks in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in in the mall or at a grocery store or someplace right. to you know get rid of those DMV lines which right, everybody right. loves so much so you know new ideas and uh, uh, and and uh, an resonate with the people an endorsement with uh, with uh, the biggest newspaper in the in the in the town yeah so that's that's uh, you know good news and you know we're talking about the uh, election coming up on November sixth if you're in California you've got a half a dozen libertarians you can vote for right. I mentioned. Uh, uh, Brandon Nelson in my district, uh, mm -hmm. Dixon uh, Davis, and, and around there for assembly. Uh, Jeff Hewitt, of course, in uh, in uh, Riverside County in Southern California, and there's there's about four others. One of whom is the uh, is the daughter of a former uh, Libertarian presidential uh, uh, candidate, uh, Harry Brown's daughter, is running oh, for really? state assembly. Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. Over Harry Brown two two terms in a row, you know, two <laughs> elections in a row. Let me do, can I just say one yeah. um, thing because. This uh, sometimes gets missed. Uh, when people tune in next week, um, it'll be two days after the election, but we won't really have anything to say <laughs> about that election because we uh, sometimes we need to know. We re pre-recorded that one before this. This is live. This is happening live right yeah. now, but ne next week's is recorded. Well, live Thursday night. Oh, it's yeah. not even right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, it's, no, it's Thursday That's night. Live. Yeah, we're yeah. live. We're we'll live we'll right also now. be broadcast uh, tomorrow, tomorrow at... Okay. Uh, at uh, what uh, uh, we're live now. Whatever. Uh, if you, yeah. if Thursday. Noon tomorrow and 5 a.m. Saturday. Yeah. yeah. No. But um, if, this if November you first broadcast is right. live. November. November. Correct. So on the eighth, if you don't find it odd that we're not talking about the uh, the, the election. results of the election. Never fear. We'll talk about the election <laughs> on the fifteenth. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll come back on the fifteenth and we'll wrap that up. October surprise is coming because, well, it's, well, it was October. In fact, the October surprise was such a surprise this year that it was, it's almost Halloweenish yes. in its, in its ghoulishness. Like, right. There are two surprises, one on the Democratic side, which is the Republicans are coming to take away your health care and make you die. Mm -hmm. right. And on which the Republican side, Republican side, there's an, a caravan Caravans. of yeah. immigrants right. coming from Guatemala are invading Honduras. us and yeah. Honduras right. and El Salvador and their gang members and right. they're coming to take your jobs and whatever. Yeah. I thought the surprise, the October surprise, was going to be Kavanaugh, but that was September. Yeah. So, okay, that's all yeah. old old story yeah. now. Yeah. 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 So anyway, talk about it a little bit, Tom. Is there anything at all that we need to worry about, either on 
less government in health care or on immigrants coming to the well, United States. I think it's less government in everything is generally the libertarian angle. Right. And, uh, and you know, you can argue back and forth about it, but it, it clearly, clearly a bunch of refugees who are leaving violent, a violent regime and violent situation and abject poverty, and they want to be part of this, how is that possibly a bad thing? How is oh, that possibly a bad thing for I think it's America? because it's so contrived. Which it's the, is? It's the, the caravan. The caravan is so contrived. It was so manipulative. Who's, who contrived it? That's a good question. Boy, but what do you mean by say? contrived? Because those are real people. Those yeah, are real no, people no, coming. Those are real actors. people that we recruited to do this. By? By, that's the question, was it? I mean, there's accusations that it was George Soros and it came from well, the Democrats. Well, you say those questions, side. but you're saying they well, were recruited. I mean, why would George they Soros? They were recruited why would George they Soros? didn't have $7,000 to eat and, well, and uh, uh, places why to would, stay. Why would it, why oh, you mean paid them, for it, not recruited. Why would yeah, the Democrats people, want people to give, give Trump yeah. Uh, you know, something to campaign on. Yeah, no, it's working it, in his Trump's favor. If let me let me take that because I've, I've heard this too. When people say, "Well, look, it's so close to the uh, to the election, who benefits and who does benefit by the visual of hordes of people coming to the United States?" Republicans benefit from that because it's terrifying to anybody who doesn't when, want when it like started, zombie though, hordes attacking the, when, the country. Now that's what what it has morphed into, but when it started, that wasn't the story. Oh, when I don't it, know what the story yeah, was the story until, was until there this, was a caravan. Yeah, no, when the car caravan started and it was and it was coming across the Mexican border, yeah. it was supposed to be stopped there. And if it had been stopped that there- That was only like a week ago, right? Or how yeah, 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 right. Yeah, that was ago. only like a week ago, yeah. right? Okay. But well, it was supposed yeah. to be stopped there. And who started it and who encouraged them and yeah. who paid for their food and who paid for them to come over? If I, I mean, it would be very interesting because to me that would really tell you know what this was about because right. this is something that was if, contrived. If this was wasn't some... a grassroots thing where they just all stood up one day and decided to walk to. to you know, the I'm United not sure. States, so. I, you know, I, I don't really know. I don't really care actually. Yeah, I, 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 uh, that's the way a side I look issue. at it is, immigrants come to the United States and they're coming here to get jobs. Yeah, to and get a better if life. If they're getting a, a job, life. they are also going to be earning money. Which they will be spending on yeah. consumer goods That's or very true. investing, and yeah. anything they spend on consumer goods or invest creates jobs right. for other people. Absolutely. So yeah. there is a net net win. There's right. a gain in jobs. They're not taking jobs. They're adding to jobs. Right. They're adding to the to the to the uh, uh, to the prosperity of our country, right. and they've been doing it ever since this country began. In the Bill of Rights, one of the complaints against the king was that he has hithered migrations here too, or right. something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the same thing. Here's now the king, king Don, is hithering migrations here hither. And I think that we should, we should definitely uh, expand our, our welcoming in of immigrants. It used to be that immigrants were coming to, to really build America. Mm -hmm. Now we're not so sure that that's really all their goal. Maybe they're coming to sort of suck our riches out of well, us, right? How? Well, you say right, but no, but, I, I'm not well, agreeing with that. I don't buy but, that. I don't agree with that. You, sort of, and, and, if they, and if they are, we have total control yeah. over that. We, well, we, we can say no. suck our riches out. Okay, but, but I mean, that's kind of the, the, that's that's the, the fear. That's the narrative, that's right. The fear, that's what but I was saying. That doesn't mean it's true. Um, but so here, here it was, 15 years ago, I proposed on, on a statewide scale that we should be, we, and this was 15 years ago when we didn't have the electronic prowess to really be able to do it, but we should be issuing them temporary refugee cars, photo IDs that mm -hmm. make them a documented right. refugee with temporary <coughs> documents. Okay. And then there's and then there's electronic ways to fill in their backstory, mm -hmm. their their background checks and um, and verify where they were born sure, and verify criminals criminal and records yeah, and things sure. like that. Uh, we can let them in the country, but they have to take their card once a month to any government agency that is equipped to do it and like swipe their office. card, yeah. a post office or, DMV. Yeah, I don't know if I trust the post office with it <laughs> well, anymore, but, but, any, but the DMV, yeah, yeah, DMV would be exactly. We trust the DMV. And, and, yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> but they just swipe it and that way we know where they are and they don't disappear. We, Visa knows where I am within 10 minutes mm -hmm. of me, but no. 30 seconds of my making a purchase, they send me a fraud alert right away saying that they think that right, you know, my, was, my was purchase was... I tried to check into a hotel in San Francisco last Sunday night and, yeah. and uh, American Express 
no, 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 no. Yeah, right. And I had to yeah, call them, the, or they called me, actually. And, that's a whole nother, yeah. nother talk. We're going to go into that right. one later. There was, but, may I put, come back yeah. to this, um, uh, something we're going to talk about next week, yeah. um, the issue of um, gender and stuff and wh whether... You had made a good point that it wasn't just this medical thing. It was a liberty issue. Right. You brought it back to the liberty issue. And this has to be back to the liberty issue. Like all of these things, people crossing an imaginary border to, to do whatever they're doing that isn't harming the person, property, or liberty of anyone else, that should be the end of the discussion. Except for we don't know that they're not hurting. Correct. And I don't know. We don't the, know. I don't know that, that, I don't know that you aren't exactly. up to something. I don't know what, what, what's going to happen. That's true of anybody. Video. But so here, here's my thing is that give them all an ID card that is swipeable and accounts okay. for where they are. Well, I, I would, I would I'd push back against that. Well, then that. we can find right. out I'd push where it they back are when against, I'd push it back against anybody having an ID card where right. the government can find out where you are. Yeah, that's well, a little but the uh, that, that worries idea, me. But the whole idea is to be able to find them when they, you know, when they, they're here on probation, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the idea is that they're in a probation status. Better than what we're doing now. Right. That would be, that would be for sure. Gary Johnson is competitive, uh, actually running for an office that he can win since he was governor of New Mexico. And it's in New Mexico, yeah. running for Senate. Uh, oh, well, you know what? We, well, we, we can the get New Mexico, the state yeah, Senate. Yeah, state please. Senate. No, no, uh, U.S. Oh, Senate. Oh, yeah, the U.S. Yeah, Senate. Run against U.S. Senate against uh, oh, come on. first time, yeah, let's go. first term incumbent Martin Heinrich, who's a Democrat. Uh, Mick Rich is the Republican nominee, first time he's running for anything. And mm -hmm. uh, Gary uh, is uh, financially competitive. Yeah. He's raised uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars, or a couple, yeah, a couple hundred, uh, a significant amount of money. So it's a couple million, I think it is. Three way race. Couple million, yeah, it's a serious three way race. He's probably raised more money than yeah. the Republican has. Uh, Heinrich, of course, has raised a huge amount of wow. money, mostly sure. from PACs and drug companies and, you know, corporate America. New Mexico has been a blue state for a long time, hasn't it? Yeah, quite a while, yeah. quite a while, yeah. But, you know, uh, it's also a, a huge, as you put it, decline to state. Right, uh, right. State. right. So, he, you know, he's competitive in New Mexico. And Gary's a good guy. I mean, you know, he did, he did a few goofy things. He got really torn up uh, by... Well, he, he, got, he, got, right. he, got, he got trashed by Hillary, Hillary's operatives towards right, the right. middle of the campaign yeah. because they could see that she was, he was taking he some was of her gonna, He was going to, he could actually. He was going to hurt her. Yeah, because there were good people. Gary Johnson and Bill Weld, you can tell, listening to them speak, even if he got a piece of information incorrect, you know that you're talking to a good person. And nobody, we didn't have that well, from either side. It doesn't seem to be a real, a real, you know, high ticket value. <laughs> being be. a good person any it longer. It should be. It should be. And maybe it'll come back. Maybe we had to have something so bad, which is what we have, for the, for basic human decency well, to become a selling point. Definitely, he's our, our president now is definitely a disruptor, and for that, I really, I really applaud him because well, it I needed understand. a little bit of disrupting. Yes. I would agree. I would agree that on one, if I may, because this is something that. I think about it a lot. We <laughs> okay. needed this to happen. Yes. But he himself is a bad man, like a bad person. <laughs> I, I, and I, I know you don't know. I think, I think the that. word I for it. I think, I think the word for it is amoral. <laughs> He's a okay. I think I, what he, I think he does further. whatever it takes to uh, you know win the next five yeah. minutes. I don't know. I guess I've been in business with business people that are like that for far too long yeah. to to recognize it as being really you know so far off center. Yeah. I just have seen it too much. I, I, I Maybe. think it's a bad, but I think I do agree that I, that this was something that was necessary. That the Hillary disruption Clinton, is really valuable to a, us. The Clinton presidency would be a band aid. We, we would be more of what we're already doing. Everything that was wrong that we're already doing. This was like a, something had to be torn off. A scab yes. had to be torn off. Everything that we were doing wrong would have been okay. Correct. The problem is that it's okay. that it's that the whole Trump versus uh, blue Democrats has turned us into a tribal nation. Right. Yes. We it should all, have become very We've all nasty. retreated into our Facebook and Twitter silos. Yeah. Uh, we all read either Slate and the, the Daily Cause, or we read uh, Fox or, or watch Fox yeah. and read Breitbart. The point is, we're not listening to each other anymore. Right. Libertarians do. I listen to yeah. both sides. That's why I know these various sites because I, I have to pay attention to what what both you know the enemies on either flank are up to. My favorite actor, Tom Hanks, when when Trump was elected, he was you know had the microphone in his face, always a gentleman. And yeah. when he was asked, you know, what do you think about about Trump being elected? And everybody else was crying and bemoaning it. And he said, I hope he does a good enough job that in four years I'll be compelled to vote for him. Hmm. 
And yeah. I thought, what a, what a <laughs> yeah. gracious thing to sure. say. I wish everybody could be that gracious. <laughs> but we've had almost two, we had two years now, almost two years. I don't, I don't think there's any room for graciousness anymore. I think, I think well, he's a I bad mean, to, man to be surrounded amoral, by bad Amoral. People. That's your to be, word. To be fair, I think, bad. I think he's done great things on regulation. Sure. Regulation. He's going to get it right once in a while. Of course. No, I think he's things. getting a lot of things right, well, actually. Policy. And I'm not even talking really about policy. I'm talking about the human being. And I'm talking well, about the, the, human being, the, the message just, that he gives as, out as, to as, the world. As a human being, he's despicable. He is absolutely I, but despicable. But he is getting a lot done. So but don't, on deregulation, so, he's sure. accomplishing things. Yep. On judicial picks. Republican on judicial would, picks. No, there's been a lot of Republicans who really didn't. No. Who really didn't get it done. Okay, well, what about on judicial picks? A lot of them are pretty good. Okay. So, you know, I mean, you know, Judicial when picks as in Kavanaugh. We're talking about Kavanaugh. I'm not talking about Kavanaugh. Right, I am talking about Gorsuch. Gorsuch I'm right. talking and about one that we never really fought. Nobody fought over Gorsuch. There was nothing to fight over. He was right. a great judge and is why, a great judge. Why do you think Kavanaugh was such a? I know this is off topic, but you probably dealt because with this before. Because it's an election. Why was he such it's a, well, be, because right because of the election. Election. It, was, it was the Kennedy seat. Yeah, hmm. and it was, it was the, the swing seat now going conservative. That's right. why that, that but, was but, but, something but, the Democrats but once he were bound and determined, bound and determined to stop at all costs. A, the a Democratic, the, any conservative, right. it wouldn't have made any difference if it was uh, Mother Teresa. Right. They right. would have gone after any conservative. Why do you think the and Republicans the reason dug they in for him? Because they know that the time clock would be running out. Right. That's what the Democrats' game was: run off the clock because until of, they can. Because the blue wave that's going to happen. Because yeah, the blue wave. The blue wave. It, because happening. yeah, they think they can stop it in uh, in with the election, or they'll run it off for two years if they can, using yeah, the not, uh, can using happen. the excuse that uh, the, the the Republicans ran off the clock. Uh, for Which the last, they did, yeah. For, the last, yeah, did, yeah. For, for a year. Yeah. So it's not that's not that much of a stretch. That that was the game. That was the game. And it, it, was seems and it to didn't me, matter who it was. They were going to pull okay. something on him. You don't think there's anything to the fact that can it, or excuse me that Kavanaugh has this uh, uh, illegal history of supporting the unitary president and of, of you know I, on I, the I, side of uh, like that a president sitting president yeah. can't be in um, I, I, I can't be that's that's a really good reason to vote against him he was also right. terrible on fourth amendment issues sure, sure. there's a lot of things bad about that saying this would be why but, the trump people specifically yeah. not republicans yeah, well, trump people specifically wanted specifically him but that that's why it's important to win elections and they didn't and the democrats didn't win right. and so the their their job is to say yes. Does he have the qualifications, or doesn't right. he? Speaking you know. of win elections, you have to get on the ballot first. Yeah, right. And uh, if you're a Republican or a Democrat, all you got to do is basically show up and right. sit down in the courthouse. You're on. But if you're a third party, if you're a libertarian or any other uh, third party or independent, you got to go out there and get hundreds of thousands of petitions right. signed. In Connecticut, you have to, I forget what the number is, there's a huge number of petitions. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, to persuade them that uh, you House have candidate, done. Dan Rial, and another candidate for the Libertarian Party in Connecticut were out at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, 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 uh, the gate to festival. the Daffodil Festival <laughs> in the city of Meriden in right. Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, shooting the breeze, sunny day. Right. Would you like to sign my petition? I want to be your representative. People were signing or not. Not All causing America. a scene. The mayor happened to walk by going to the Daffodil Festival and said, uh-uh, libertarians, huh. yeah. we can't have that. He sent in the gendarmes to shut them down, run them off under the penalty, under the police. Sent in law enforcement, you're right. Sent in law enforcement to run them off, saying that if you don't leave immediately, you will be arrested, you will be detained. What would be the charge? Who the hell knows? Uh, there was no charge, huh. but they, you know, resisting scared arrest. Them. Yeah, resisting right. Arrest. Ultimately, <laughs> resisting arrest. Right. And so they they left. A couple of hours later, they called back and said, you know, we, I don't know what we were doing wrong. Right. What would happen if we went back? You, so would, be, they did. you, you would be you would be thrown in jail, uh, oh. among other things. Wow. And charged with something. Who knows? Uh, so they they what they didn't know is that Dan Riel, his day job is paralegal. He's not a lawyer. Oh, a lawyer, right, but he is right. But he can find so he, out. He, the law. he knew he knew what needed yeah. to be done. So he, representing himself, filed a lawsuit on behalf of himself and the Libertarian Party of Connecticut. Right. And as soon as he got a little newspaper coverage, took a little newspaper coverage for it to happen. Yeah. But as soon as he got a little bit of news, newspaper coverage, the city of Meriden said, "Eh, we'll set, we'll, we'll give you, yeah. we'll settle. We'll give yeah. you a thirty, give the uh, the party thirty-five thousand dollars. We'll give you another." Uh, Two thousand dollars if you go away. As long 30, as there's no more ink. Thirty-two and five. Is, yeah. no, we'll make this issue go yeah. away. So the mayor never had to testify. We never no. got to hear. No, his... that's why they settled. So yeah. the mayor right. didn't have to testify. Right. Right. Didn't get his face and. 
you wanted to end that. End of, end that I wonder in a situation like that if the mayor himself could be personally sued. Or yeah, it, it happens. Sure. Sure. It sure. happens. Yeah. In any case, a very good precedent for libertarians and other third party candidates everywhere. If you are hassled because you are following the rules, yeah. you've got to get all of these petition signatures, yeah. and they won't let you do it. Sue them. Yeah. You might, you, they, might, they might buy a, little, a few petition signature right. uh, payments for you. Uh, President Trump, back to, back to, I'll to, let uh, someone to else the, take the this amoral one. one. <laughs> President Trump has uh, threatened to use an executive order yeah. to repeal the Constitution, or one provision of the Constitution, the birthright citizenship provision, provision of the, of the 14th, 14th Amendment mm -hmm. to the United States Constitution. The 14th Amendment was passed after the Civil War. It was basically emancipating uh, blacks and telling uh, so saying that citizens you know, if they're born here. If you're born yeah. here, you're a citizen. Right. And yeah. that's been the case ever since. There's a number of countries in the world where if you're born here, you're a citizen. You're right. born there, you're a citizen. It Mexico, a Canada. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, and it's a good thing. Countries so full to disclosure on my part, my yeah. mother was a German citizen when I was born here. Yeah, and and, and my father was an American citizen. Okay. Right. And but so you're an American citizen. Yeah. I would hope so. And, and you I would, would be, even I, if neither of them were. And I would hope. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make and a difference. I don't. Were. I don't agree with changing this because to be born in America is really a privilege. Right. It right. really is a very precious thing. Yeah. Right. But, but what, but what is the reason anybody. for going after? It's this. provocative. Yeah. It's provocative. It that's, that's the that's, last couple that's of the weeks. Only thing it last is. couple of weeks yeah. before the election, immigration is the, the is the is raw the, meat issue. That so you seems think to be, he, he drops this after the election? Who no, knows what he does I think, after I the, think the push is going to be to get this heard at the Supreme Court level, right. just to skip over everything, and get it right to the Supreme just Court. Just get it right up there to kill. Well, he's backed off yeah. now. He said, "Well, maybe, maybe oh, we should, really? maybe we should go." Yeah, the I think it was just provocative. Maybe we should go the congressional route. Yeah, yeah right. Ah, okay. I haven't heard him backing off. A constitutional last... amendment would take decades. Right. Uh, it's not going to happen. But, but it, like you say, but it's the, provocative. It's something. It's red meat. Their first thing they're going to talk about is, and maybe he'll withdraw it. But he. Uh, is whether he can even do it as an executive order. Well, he can't. Right. I mean, he can right. do it, but he can't, he can't make it stick. Well, there's there are a lot of scholars that, that have said there that are, this is a yeah. sticky... Right. There are, there, I mean, he's got, he's got scholars that are working for him on, on his, in his, as, his, uh, as his trade people who think that tariffs are a good thing. I mean, there are scholars mm, that yeah. are total cranks, and he probably well, can find, he, you can find a scholar that will, will support anything. Just, you know, go to the University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> no, but there, were, there have been people from, from far back in, mm. you know, when this was first, this was first um, being really looked at other than uh, patriating the slaves, right? Mm. It was being looked at in the 1940s, long before Trump and stuff, and it's, there was the challenges to it, right? Subject to the... I don't think any of those cha challenges have ever ever seen the light of day. None of them have ever made it to the right. Supreme Court yeah. and really and I, been and discussed. And I, and and nor they, should they. Nor, nor, nor should they. Nor, nor I think they have maybe the they should be so. so it can be put to bed forever. Yeah, maybe so. That, yes. that, would, that, that's, that might be, might, might be yeah. the right way to go with it. Because the question, as I understand it, the, the, the scholars, whoever you want to um, characterize them as, is that uh, the... The child born here, we already have a precedent for um, for uh, black former slaves. We have a, and for but not for How illegal about for aliens. like Hawa Hawaiians who who were born in Hawaii yeah. before Hawaii was a state. Bef right, they are U.S. citizens. That's the show. We wanted to talk about Pittsburgh, but we ran out of time, so we'll maybe do it in a couple of weeks. Thank you very much for being part of the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place on Libertarian Counterpoint. Thank you.